Good morning, I'm Mick, and today we're going to be creating a cultural art style for one of my fictional races, giving it some depth and really fleshing out the culture as we go along. Let's get right into it. Oh, hello there. Sorry, I went to the bank earlier, couldn't help myself. I had a whole script written out for this video, and then I showed my cards too early and I had to scrap it and change it into like three different videos. So that's great. And it's really windy, so audio is not great either, so. Wonderful all around. Anyway. Hello, it's me, your favorite YouTuber and future leader of Micronesia after my violent takeover in 2027. Stand the lookout for that. In my last video, much to my bewilderment, I ended up getting a lot of comments on these paintings in particular. These are my cultural art paintings that I made almost as an afterthought. Well, not exactly an afterthought, but it wasn't what I thought people were going to focus in on in the sea of other things I made last month. But I think there's a lot to talk about on the subject, so I figured I'd turn it into a full-length video. I have been absolutely obsessing over this for just weeks now, so let's dive into the process. I'll show you all my inspirations, what I find so appealing in this, and uh, I guess that's all the intro we really need, so let's jump right into it. That is some atrocious Keurig coffee. I have become utterly enamored with the idea of the cultural art style. It's kind of a weird niche interest, so what exactly is the draw? I will tell you what the draw is. The draw is that human culture, just in general, is absolutely fascinating. Fascinating. Humanity, just by virtue of spreading out to new places, develops customs, taboos, color schemes, tools, agriculture, all sorts of different things, and it's just, it's mind-boggling, and, hold up. People just don't appreciate it half as much as they should, in my opinion. It's just a study with so many unique and interesting facets to explore. I just, I can't get enough of it. And as a professional appreciator of the world around me, it's pretty high on my list of cool things to think about. To put it simply, it's like, it's my Roman Empire. Okay. I heard someone say the other day, the Roman, like, the Roman Empire is like the pumpkin spice latte of what men think about. And I, I kind of agree with that. It's fine. I like the Roman Empire, everyone likes the Roman Empire, but you could be thinking about Syria, Babylon, ancient ancient Near East, all that stuff. I love that it's so much cooler. Mongolia, all sorts of stuff. I'm going on a tangent now. This is this has nowhere in this has no place in the script that I have written whatsoever. So let's get back to it. To put it succinctly, people are just great at creating different flavors of how to exist as a human being on this planet. And I really really appreciate that. And since I have the capacity to do so, I really want to explore that in my art. I could paint architecture or scenes or clothing in the style of whatever culture I am creating at the moment, but why cultural art styles specifically? Why is that my focus? Other than the fact that, of course, I am an artist and, you know, art style is kind of in the name. I think it's because cultural art styles seem to come about so naturally. They make up the absolute most foundational bedrock region of any culture. I mean, think back on every ancient site you can possibly think of. Just pick one off the top of your head. Other than the stonework, what has actually survived? It's the carvings, it's the paintings, it's the reliefs in the unified style of whatever culture put it there. The Aztecs, Native American nations, Native Alaskan peoples, China, India, Japan, Russia, hell, medieval Europe in general. All these people groups, all these different places separated from us by thousands of miles and usually thousands of years and still to this day you can look at most of them and say oh I know what that is that's Polynesian carvings oh those are Babylonian reliefs that just blows my mind how does that come to be because it seems like at some point some random guy out in the middle of nowhere just drew some weird looking people and then everyone in his tribe or family group was just like oh guess that's how you draw people and then you get a cultural art style from that. And just the mystery of it is so alluring in so many ways to me. I love it so, so much. Almost every society, the one of the very first things at the very bottom of the archaeological record, right after like clay ovens and stonework, is weird art. I love that. But the question must be begged, how are we going to explore this? 
Well, as I showed you guys in the last video, I've been working on creating some cultures for a project I'm working on. They don't have names yet, but because of their clothes, vibes, and having a general knowledge of where these guys live in the setting I'm building, one of the first things I need to do to flesh them out is build their cultural art styles, which will give me patterns, textures, and motifs for architecture, clothing, metalworking, and so on. I've already done a sort of proof of concept for this fella right here, or as my friend called him, Elton John from 1000 BC, which, you know, that's fair. But these paintings I gave you guys a look at last time were the art style I made for his culture, a very low-tech society with a limited stock of available pigments. By taking inspiration from Athabascan and Sami cultures, I got this highly patterned and stylized rendition of plants, animals, and natural scenes. Since the society hasn't developed agriculture and depends on the sea for food, travel, and materials like bones and ivory for tools, scenes of wildlife and ocean creatures are especially prevalent in the art. I've limited the color palette to seven simple colors that I can explain how they got them, and the rest can sort of evolve from there as needed. But what about these other two? These other two are exactly what we'll be doing today. We'll be going over the environment seas to come from, what pigments and materials would be available to them, taboos and customs around the creation of their art, mythology, the list goes on. So, I guess without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting with this lady right here. Look at this clown. Look at this absolute buffoon. Uh, we did not actually ever get into the other one. It was, it would have been a really, really long video. I was running short on time. I needed to get this out. And we can spend more time focusing on the other art style next time. So, it, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll just be another video from now. Anyway, back, back, back to it. So, we have for this lady a single portrait, a general idea of where she lives, and that is exactly it. Let's build a culture from that. Might seem a bit daunting at first, but there's actually a lot more to work with than you might think. For starters, we have this design on her coat, robe, whatever you want to call it, as well as some similar effects on the hat. But then throwing a wrench right into the middle of what is a very obvious preference for sharp lines and geometric shapes, we also have an entire face worth of dynamic, curvy face paint. Now, how do we deal with that? My immediate thought is to do a mixture in which we have a band of these geometric chain-like patterns with bends and curves sort of sprouting out of them on the top and bottom, which works just fine and is honestly a pretty lovely effect. But the question that comes to mind for me is, if these two shape languages are being converged as a stereotypical use of this art style, then why are they so separate on her? And what's the significance of the face paint? I spent a bit of time thinking about this, and I eventually thought of a pretty interesting way to go about it. The face paint is an extremely varied facet of this culture, and is worn by almost everyone, varying in style and shape from person to person. Why is that? Because the face paint isn't an arbitrary pattern, nor are the geometric patterns on her clothes, but a blending of artistic flair and written language. Many languages in the real world divide words into masculine and feminine, like the Spanish O for masculine and A for feminine words. In a similar way, this language is split in half on a system of tangible and intangible. Geometric writing is used to talk about the world, material, plants, animals, landmarks, tools, any physical thing, whereas the curvy writing system is used to convey intangible, anger, love, status, value, grief, things like that. I could definitely go on about this writing system, but considering it's kind of a paper language used exclusively for filigree, I'll spare you. What matters is what we apply it to, and in that regard, we are just about ready. I did this sort of paint doodle to figure out exactly how I wanted to approach this art style, and I'm really happy with a lot of the results. But it was a weird piece of paper, odd uses of some colors, and just sloppy overall. But that was fine. That's exactly why I did it on a disposable sheet of paper as opposed to the main book. Now I know what to aim for, so let's really get to work with this design while cleaning things up in the process. A good place to start in this regard is asking about what pigments these guys would have access to, where they live, and what they might want to make art about. In my mind, these guys live in the deep south of our archipelago setting, having settled the steppe lands at the foot of a mountain range that covers most of that region. They're a fairly advanced civilization with agriculture in the form of both crops and livestock, impressive stonework, and the early stages of complex metalworking. I gave them 10 base colors to work with, and of course, these can be mixed as needed. I think as a general rule, the more society develops, the less it wants to make art of animals, and the more it wants to make art of people. So, people should be our primary focus, but people doing what? To figure that out, let's lay out some cultural values. I've been playing around with the idea of making this culture a matriarchy, so let's go with that. And if that's the case, motherhood is probably a pretty important facet of these people. Pair that with a cultural reverence for accumulated wisdom, passed down from generation to generation, 
and we get some ideas for scenes. Scenes of mothers and children, old women instructing the young, the teaching of trades and skills, beautified and presented as the moral standard. And with that we get a pretty good foundation to work off of. Just from asking questions and following them to their natural conclusions, we created a strong cultural identity just with the art and the lore that comes with it. We get a vivid picture of this people group and its culture, with language, customs, and traditions baked into the discovery process. And speaking of language, let's head back to that for a second. In the art world, there's a design concept called greebling, which is the practice of filling something with tiny, meaningless details to bring about texture and the illusion of complexity. And really that's what I'm doing here, but I'm taking it a step further in this project, because everything I'm putting on this page is something I'll eventually have to reverse engineer some sense into, instead of leaving it as artistic filler. When making art, I think a lot of people get lost in the thing itself and forget that art should be more than the sum of its parts. The best way to create, in my opinion, is to focus almost exclusively on the vibe and aura you want the piece to exude, and work to make that happen within the work. For this project, on this page, and in the wider story we're beginning to explore, some of the core story elements are ancient history and a sense of foreignness. That's why I went to the trouble of breaking down the writing system into some kind of alphabet. Not because I expect the viewer to gain any insight from that, but to make them wonder what the in-world person or people who created this page were trying to accomplish in doing so. We get all these pieces of text in a different language filling up the empty space in the page. What is the author talking about? Are there multiple? And if so, are they discussing things using this page as a vessel for some ancient conversation that happened long ago? To put it simply, when people see this, I want them to feel like they're looking at some ancient text and wonder what the person who created it was trying to convey. And even more so, I want those questions people ask to have real answers. And that is going to be just about all for today. I hope that was interesting or useful to you guys in some way. I definitely had a great time putting it together, even though it did result in a pretty severe lack of sleep. I'm going to I'm gonna get a lot of sleep today. If you want to see more from this channel, please subscribe. I mean, it costs nothing. It helps me out a lot. I'm trying very hard right now to build a viewer base here and every single one of you guys. I'm so glad to have you along. Please tell me in the comments what you might want to see next. I am always open to new ideas. And I guess until next time... Have a lovely evening. Thank you so much for watching.